am going to call this meeting for on August 2nd at 7.01, and I am going to seat John Goodrich for Todd Brady. Um, if you would like to read all, that would be great. Sure. Dear Matt, please publish the following notice for one insertion on Monday, July 25th, 2022, and of Groton Notice of Public Hearing, Historic District Commission. The Historic District Commission will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, August 2nd, 20. 22 at 7 p.m. at the Groton Town Hall Annex, 134 Groton Long Point Road, and virtually via the Zoom platform to hear the following applications requesting a certificate of appropriateness. HDC 22-43-29, oh, it's 22-43, 29 Cliff Lane, Glenn Brady owner, Tim Bassett applicant, replacing overhang pin number 26191433162, HDC 22-44, 9 Roland Street, Eric Goodman, owner applicant, garage additions and renovations, in number 26180529 HDC 22-45, 3 Pearl Street, Pearl Street Capital Limited Liability Company, owner Craig Margiano, applicant, final siding, pin number 26191831786. HDC 22-46, 5 Water Street, Sift Real Estate, LLC, owner, Peter Springsteel, applicant, alterations to second floor outdoor dining area, pin number 26191833086132-47, HDC 22-47, 265 Noack Road, Matthew Lindauer, owner, Peter Springsteel, applicant, Addition and renovations, pin number 26180528495, HDC 22-48, 21 West Main Street, 21 Mass, Mass West Main Street, LLC owner, Peter Springsteel, applicant, add rooftop dining area, pin number 26191840188886. Zoom meeting link will be posted to the town's website meeting calendar or can be attended by visiting www.zoom.us. Webinar ID 825-2986-6168, password 699-695, or by phone 1312-626-6799. Applications are on file and available for public inspection during normal business hours at the Planning Department, 134 Groton Long Point Road, Groton, Connecticut, Dated this 25th day of July, 2022, at Groton, Connecticut, Todd Brady, Secretary. So I'm gonna make a motion to waive the reading of the hearing procedures. All in favor? Aye. 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 Linda, we all aye. So if anyone would like to read the hearing procedures, they're over there, that yellow slash orange piece of paper. 22-40. HDC 22-4052 Pearl Street, um, Stephen Young widening, widening of the driveway. Please, oh, you can no drag chair. a chair. Usually we have some chairs available. Oh, if you want. Okay. I'll be brief. Sure. Uh, I sent you all a letter at the end of last week regarding uh, this application. Do you recall, uh, did you get it? John got it. Um, I can, it's brief, I can go over it if you like. I wasn't here last time. Well, I sent it to all of you via email on Friday, but uh, I, I'd be happy to read it briefly. That would be great. Okay, it's pretty so, quick. Just because I wasn't here last time, so yeah. your application is to- I am not Stephen Young, I am Stephen Young's neighbor, Craig Bush oh. at 54 Pearl Oh, Street. I did get that. I, okay. I thought you were the applicant. No. I see. Okay, okay, so we all on board with my letter of last week? Um, well, yes, but um, if you could just give us a minute for one sure. second. Um, so, you may have to move some documents. Yeah. I, I did get forwarded an email, um, and I can check it in a second. But just so this application was continued. Correct. So, 
who was here last time? I was, and John Goodrich um, extended it to review the parking area, the parking um, criteria in the HDC uh, handbook for that reason. And um, it was continued for that reason. So was the applicant here tonight? He was no. on Zoom the last time. Okay, is he on Zoom now? I don't know, he lives in Boston. Okay. Eric, Last name is Joe. Yeah. Okay, so excuse me. I, I just want to let you know um, that we did receive uh, in the email from Steve Young, and he is away um, out of the country with his family on vacation. So he requested um, an extension or a continuation. Okay. He's, he's not going to be available at the meeting. Okay, that makes more sense. Um, so what we normally do is when an applicant requests a continuance of their application, we can continue it, which we will do. But if you'd like to speak on the application, you may. Okay. Okay, Okay. I guess I will. Uh, again, you've got my letter, so I won't repeat that. Okay. Um, your letter. Absolutely. I got it, sorry. Uh, it may be. Uh, it may be written on both sides. You have to flip it up. So, uh, as I said in my letter. Greg, hold on one second. Just because Sarah and Eric weren't there, this applicant had already done the work without doing okay. the application process. Okay. So that's where we stand. Gotcha. Okay, so you'll see I uh, I listed uh, that in my letter. I also talked about other uh, things that the applicant has done during the process, such as installing HVAC compressors without your approval or without town's approval. And that was six weeks before this happened. Uh, this happened and he, um, as you know, on a Sunday morning at 7.15, four trucks came from Boston and did this work in an hour and left town. There was nobody to call in town. I wasn't gonna call the police, it wasn't their business. So I called Peter on Monday morning and he sent a stop work order, but of course the work has been done. Okay, so go ahead. So you're not representing him. You're here objecting to what he That's did. correct. Okay, now I understand what's going on. That's correct. Sorry, thank you. Now, I'm here tonight objecting, but let me read to you the note that I sent to him prior to last meeting. Dear Steve, in an effort to attempt to normalize our relationship and once again see your wonderful children swinging under our walnut tree, we are not going to oppose your application to the Historic District Commission for the widening of your driveway. Let them review your application and make an unbiased determination based on their own views. We will be away next week on the high seas. We hope to see you all again in the not too distant future. So that was my position regarding this application going into the last meeting. Based on his statements at that meeting and his actions since, my position is entirely different. What? Is entirely different. Okay. I believe that this application is not only about widening a driveway, which is what it was about last time, it's about the integrity of your process. And he is doing things here that he didn't ask permission for, and he's done it before. And there was a long discussion last week, two weeks ago, about why this is happening so much in town. Why are people doing this? There were innocent people here who had done things without your approval. But we all know there are developers who do this time and time again. And if we don't make an example of the ones who are doing this, they're gonna to continue to do it. So, Thank you. Mm -hmm. So we're going to continue this application mm -hmm. and you're more than welcome to come back at the next meeting and join us again. Okay. All right. Yes. So I'll make a motion to continue. I'll second it. 
Um, all in favor, I'll do a roll call just for, for Linda's benefit. Goodrich? Aye. Levinson? Aye. Moriarty? Aye. Goodrich? Uh, Goodman? Aye. No. Aye. Thank you. Motion application is continued. Thank you. You're so welcome. Yeah. And just so that if the other panelists want to look in the manual, it's on 1143 is the section on the widening of the driveways. Thank you, Bonnie. Yeah, Bonnie, I did look it up. It's pretty clear. Yeah. Uh, 2243. HGC 22-4329 Cliff Lane. Um, Tim Bassett. Come on up. I think this is pretty simple. I don't know. But uh, the person at 29 Cliff Lane has a piece of rotted wood that's above his door. It's a little overhang now. Identify yourself. Uh, Tim Bassett. Okay. And your address, please? Uh, the work's going to be done at 29 Cliff Lane in Mystic. Yeah, I'm not the owner of the land. I'm just going to be doing the work there. For public hearings, you just have to announce where, you're, uh, where you are and where, what your address is. Okay. And uh, I guess the app, what we're trying to do is, is trying to change that wood that's rotted above his doorway and replace it with ASEC material. And we want to extend his overhang from nine inches to like 18 inches so when he's, the rain doesn't bother him when he's or the weather when he's trying to open the door. I have pictures and stuff. I didn't bring anything with me, except I got the stuff there. So I'm gonna pass this around so yeah. everyone sees it, but just this is the existing. Yes. And you wanna replace this with AZAC and extend it out from- Coming uh, out, not lengthwise, the width of it. So here is nine inches. Uh, from there back to the house is nine inches. When it's to go 18 inches. 18 inches out, out. correct. And keeping the same look. No, I can't see a thing. We'll show you in just a second, Bonnie. No problem. I can wait. I guess, how are you going to support it out 18 inches? Well, I have, uh, with the building inspector, I'm going to have just uh, a little view of what I'm going to do and mount it, and I'll go through the building inspector. <clears throat> and then mounted into the existing two by eight that's against the house already with the structural lag bolts. So you won't see any of that? You won't see that. It'll be all covered with uh, the AZEC PVC material. I don't have any problem with the view. It's just, I don't, it's not going to work. I don't want to get into like your construction techniques, but that's going to, not going to work. I would go with, uh, but the building inspector requires me to do something different, and I would just do something different to support it. Which is, yeah, you're going to, that board's going to pull itself out. You got to like screw bolt it from the outside. And then I may not even, if that's the case, and I wouldn't even go the 18 inches out then. Yeah. I would just keep it the same as it is if I, if this is not, uh, I'm going to share some space with you. Thank you. I mean, it looks fine. I don't, I'm not objecting to that. I'm not objecting to anything, actually. I just, I just don't think it's going to work. But. All right. Yeah, I can see it. Okay, this is the GIS map. That's yep. the site. Yep. So this is the structure. Okay. And this is what they want to replace with okay. AZAC. Okay. And bring it out 
not this way, but this way, 18 inches. Oh, yes, to create more of a cover. An overhang? Yes. Okay. A different view. Yep. It's a little in forecast number 35. That's his neighbor's house. Additional neighboring properties. Yeah, that's across the street. More neighboring properties. Yeah. Yeah, I know all those houses. <clears throat> and this is the exact pamphlet, which you're familiar with the materials. Okay. But he doesn't have the dimensions that he's going to build it to. So I, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. I do, but I have I have to go through the building inspector. As Eric said, if I can't if I can't get away with putting structural lag bolts to support it, and I want three uh, through bolts to support it, then I'll probably keep the same dimensions that it is right now and just change the material. Okay, I'm okay with that. I mean, oh, we're not here to design it. Well, what's I think what's important is what are what people is that this is replaced with AZAC and then it comes out 18 inches as per the application. Right. Um, design, which is a far per view. If his design doesn't work, then he'll have to come back if right. the dimensions change. Correct. Any change now and we can modify the application? Well, I think he's hoping. Yeah, I'd have to talk to the owner too. If he wants me to cut the sheetrock out and do all that, then, then I would do that but if he doesn't want me to go that far into it i have more of a handyman retired and i have a little handyman income so i'm not sure how how much he really wants to get involved in it but if he uh wants me to do that then i'll do that and i'll do whatever the building inspector requires for me to support that structure i'm gonna we can't do it 18 and then in the alternatives we can do it with an like an administrative Switch the name Absolutely, but okay. I think he'd have to come back and say, this is the administrative plan. It's going to be 19 for a building code, and then we have to just do it in old business. You wouldn't have to come back. Oh, you just do it in email. You just do it in yeah, old I, business. I just, yeah. Uh, I'm good with that. Right. Do you understand what we're Yes, I do. I have to. If, if I'm not going to go 18, send you an email, tell you what I'm going to do. I mean, he may want me to go 18. Because that was an issue, and that's one of the reasons why you want to replace doing. If it has to do that, I'll definitely go through the building inspector and get the mm -hmm. proper way to support that structure. Everyone, yeah, just standing. next time if you do come back, can you explain the relevance of the neighboring property pictures? They told me to do that. Right. So the application says take photos of all the existing. So I don't know what because this was a 1985 house. And I don't know if they, it would matter if all the other houses weren't. I don't know. I was just told to get the neighboring houses. That's why I just followed what they were told to do. Any other questions? They're not particularly uh, very old houses right there, except for up on the corner. Thank you. Well, thank, you. thank you. Do any of the commission members have any additional questions for the applicant? No. Would anyone in the audience like to speak for this application? Would anyone in the audience like to speak against this application? HTC 22-43 is closed. Not yet. And Sarah, I've, yes, pulled, I've pulled open on my iPad the um, meeting minutes, so you don't have to go on camera for me, just for me. Oh, okay. Thanks, Bonnie. That's the same. I've got a warning. It didn't really work for planning and zoning. The audio cut out. Um, you're willing to continue, right? That's yeah. Right. Okay. Sure. So HDC 22-449 Roland Street, Eric Goodman, owner applicant. I'm going to continue that to the next hearing. Uh, I got to do roll call. I Goodrich. Hi. Hi. Moriarty. I Goodman. Aye. Why no. are we continuing it? Because it's Eric's application and Cody isn't here to make it. Oh, okay. All right. I think Eric has to recuse himself. So oh, Who's Cody? 
also have to make it. Excuse myself from the vote to continue it. Right. Oh, okay. Who is Cody? Uh, Cody Blake. Yeah, who is that? Eric's partner. Oh, okay. Amy yeah. Blake. Okay. Okay. I, I, I the applications. If somebody new on the HDC. No, no, no. No, the guy, that's, the guy that's been in here like a dozen times over the past two years. All right, HDC 22-45. Uh, three Pearl Streets. Craig. Oh, Margiano. Nope. Linda, did we hear from Mr. Margiano as to whether he was attending tonight? No, I haven't heard. Uh, I did send him the link so that he could attend. Um, via Zoom and explain to him that we are also in person. So I haven't okay. heard anything. All right, I don't see him. I'm just gonna set him aside for right now. And if he joins us later, we'll call him back. Otherwise we'll continue until the next application. 22-46. Um, Do we have to vote on? Oh, we're not gonna continue it yet. I gotcha. HGC 22-46, SIFT 5, Water Street. Is or left, just put her hand up. We'll go back. Good evening. Uh, Adam Young, owner of Bake Shops at Real Estate. Peter Springsteel, I believe, is joining us virtually. Oh, He's going to be representing. Oh, there he is. Peter, you're muted. There we go. Can you hear me? Yep, you're good. Okay, uh, Peter Springsteel here. I'm gonna share the screen. Um, I'm uh, Peter Springsteel, architect, 105 Star Street, here tonight representing um, Adam Young and his uh, restaurant at uh, Five Water Street in Mystic. And this is our application. We're proposing to um, add a roof onto the rear dining deck that is presently existing uh, on the second level in the rear of the building. Uh, what I have here is the uh, neighborhood map. You can see SIFT right here, Pizzetta's next door in this building, and then the standard is this building right here. And in this photo, you can see, um, sorry, I grabbed the, this photo here, you can see um, SIFT building right here. Pizzetta, and they both had the same kind of Greek Revival roof, and uh, the new standard building over here, which is taller and a little more grand looking. In the back is the area in which we're planning to put the roof line. You can see there's a um, sort of a bar, a covered bar area here, and there's seating already up there, and it's used as a dining area already. Um, site plan. This is the standard building with the driveway. This is the current outdoor first floor seating area of SIF that wraps around the front on Water Street. Uh, the main building block is this right here, the two-story section here. And then the dining area is this piece right here. There's also a stairway that exists that goes up to that area from outside, and we're proposing to put a roof on that as well. So you can see that noted here and the notation about the roof on the second floor right here. Um, this is a floor plan of the um, 
dining area on the second floor. Uh, the seating arrangement will change a little bit. The bar uh, will change. That little rooftop you see over the bar, that'll go away. And um, the new roof will be in place of that. This is the front elevation view from Water Street. You can see the existing building right here. There's an existing uh, pergola right here. And then this is the proposed new roof uh, beyond towards the back of the building. So this is not up at the face of the building. This is set back quite a bit from the street. And I think you saw that in the photo. This view here is from the north, uh, as if you were standing in the driveway of the standard next door, looking back at the SIFT building. So all this up here is existing three-story building with the pergola. This is the existing stairway. And we're proposing to put this simple roof line on the stairway just to provide covered access to the second floor. And then this is the proposed new roof over the dining area. We've got new railings as well. They're gonna be um, stainless steel cable railings with an AZAC post termination. Um, and then we're gonna have AZAC clad post to, to support the roof line. Um, and then we've got an open gable here and on the back, which you'll see in a moment, with a uh, decorative wood element in the gable itself. This piece here below is existing, not supposed to be changed. Okay, this elevation is from the back. Uh, you would see this from the parking lot, the uh, Art Center parking lot. So you're seeing the new railing wrapping around. Right now, there's a composite railing there that we're going to replace with this railing that you see. This is the roof line sloping down uh, almost in a salt box style to the bump out area here. And then this is the regular gable uh, portion of that. And then in the previous elevation, you saw this gable facing out towards the standard. So it's kind of an L-shaped roof that we're putting on this to break down the scale of it a little bit. <clears throat> and then this uh, facade is from uh, Pizzetta side of the building. So this is the existing three-story building. This is an existing enclosed stairway that gets you off that deck as well. Um, the existing first floor uh, kitchen area here. And then this is the new roof and the new railing system right here. Um, as far as materials there's, go, there's an emergency exit down in there. Uh, yeah, this stairway serves uh, the building and this deck. It's the second okay. means of egress off the dining room. And that's existing. Yes, it is. Okay, I just never noticed it. Okay, great. Um, as far as materials go, we're going to do um, architectural asphalt shingle to match what's presently on the uh, main building. Um, all the trim will be painted AZA. The columns included will be clad with painted AZA. And these um, railing posts will be painted AZA. We're going to have the stainless steel railing. And then one thing that you don't really see in these drawings so well is that there'll be a ceiling inside of this roof line that'll be exposed. And you'll be able to see that, especially from the rear and the standard side. And I believe what I've specified here, I gotta zoom in. And it's a tongue and groove, I believe, beadboard. Somewhere there's a note. Painted PVC beadboard ceiling. So you're not going to see unfinished rafters there. You're going to see a finished ceiling. And that would be the case on uh, beneath this other stairway roof as well. 
So that is my presentation. Adam, I don't know if there's anything that you want to add to that, um, but go ahead if you like. I don't think so, Peter. Uh, thank you very much. However, if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Peter, we have, a, we have drawings here and I'm on the last page of the drawings. Can you go to that on the screen? Yeah, sorry, yes, I should have mentioned these. We have these 3D drawings. So um, the lower level, is that all existing? The the entrances, the handicap entrances, those doorways, I can't remember. Is that all already there? Yes, that's all okay, there. So it's just, just the roof. You don't really see this because there's some okay. storage things in front of it. But yes, we're yeah, just asking for the roof, yeah, roof and the railing. OK. Um, that's my only question pertaining to that. And I remember Eric had come in with that roof over the, the at le first floor level seating. And, and I don't, I thought, did we ever finish that? Approved? It got continued and then fell off. Yeah, that was a first. It was that's approved? Yeah. I don't the, remember the it getting approved. On the portal? Oh, no, no, you, you never did that. You just forgot about it. No, we, we don't have them. Yeah, that's what I think Bonnie was talking about. Oh, well, the, per, the pergola. The pergola is there, the yes. The pergola is existing. But the, the covering on the pergola just kind of, it lapsed. And if I'm not mistaken, I don't think that we could ever put, correct me if I'm wrong, a rubber roof on the pergola yeah, from right. a structural right. standpoint. Exactly. Right. So, so yeah, that was. approve that plastic that's up above it now? There's. Is there plastic there now? There's some clear plastic on top. Yeah. yeah. It is. Right. Should we add that to this application? Well, that that's temporary. Um, and it's not part of his application. So okay. at this point, I would say my perspective would be no. Okay. Um I'll I'll say my viewpoints. I love this roof. I yeah. did not like the way that the building looked before. I really think that this roof is a great improvement. I agree. Um, com and completely outside of this roof, at some point, you need to address the lights out front. I understand that's not part of this application, though. So. And the plastic yeah. other roof. Right. But Peter <laughs> and uh, Adam, you're single handedly renovating like keeping the economic engine of mystic going isn't this like your seventh edition <laughs> thank you <very> at least <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, thank you uh, i think, I think uh, it's lovely too on a side note i'm happy to address the lanterns out front i've only received one email from the public i don't think it was any anyone from this commission but if there is any issue, there's no way it's an issue about it. Okay, so you should. Just I can certainly that. rectify it. That's not an issue. an application for the lights out front. Okay. Yeah. Let all the lights. All the lights. I'll do it tomorrow. Yeah. That's that's. For this, do you have to take anything down in order to put this roof up? Because isn't there things already up there? Currently, there is a structural, uh, for lack of a better word, pergola over the operating bar section only. And I believe that's reflected in some renderings above. Uh, that will have to be taken down, obviously. It's roof line one. You're yes. right there. You can see it very technically. On our certificate of approval, mm -hmm. or when we vote, assuming it's approved, we'll denote that that's removed. You can have to come back for that. OK. Because those are approved, so it's not like it's a structure. Sure. Um, any other questions or comments? I agree with you. I think it's a huge improvement. It's wonderful. I have a question for Adam um, or Peter. Are you planning on doing like plastic roll downs or something for the winter? Yes. So the whole purpose of this is to create a more sustainable venue. All of my other venues are annual. Uh, and unfortunately, this one becomes difficult to manage. It's very weather dependent and onboarding. We onboard about 30 to 40 people just for this specific venue every year. So to be able to create jobs that are sustainable year round, you can attract a better demographic. You can guarantee them, you know, income throughout the year. Whereas now I'm hiring people for essentially three months. Right. Best case scenario, weather permitting. Okay. You're not. 
getting those approved now. Just don't even know what they are. That's correct. Looks wonderful. Peter, I did see gutters in here somewhere in downspouts. Yes. Sorry, that's all reflected. Yes, there are gutters and downspouts. Um, we're uh, basically going to handle the same water that we handle now, and we're going to put it in the same underground drain that it all goes to right now. And they're just tight, they're just aluminum uh, type K, your normal uh, gutters that you see on most buildings. And the water volume would be the same. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Would anyone in the audience like to speak for this application? Would anyone in the audience like to speak against this application? HDC 22-46 is closed. Thank you. HDC 22-47. Um, 265 No Link Road, Lindauer residence. Did I crush L that name? Lindauer. Is that you, Peter? Yes, Peter Spring Steel here again. Um, architect 105 Star Street representing Matt and Meredith uh, Lindauer. Um, their property here at 265 No Link Road is this one right here. So this is Westminster coming down here, No Ink Road coming here. Downtown Mystic is this way. Um, this sits up on a knoll, um, pretty high off the road. It's a sort of a mid-century house, um, not, you know, very interesting. And uh, this is a view from No Ink Road. This being the Lindauer residence right here set back off the road quite a bit and up the hills you can see they and came then, before us before um, a yeah, i think oh, i came okay. for the okay. preliminary yeah okay. yeah okay um and then you've got a cape over here and you've got a more traditional house over here colonial looks like um to the right of this is a lot of uh, uh wooded areas and hilltop you know there are real no no real structures that you can see over this way until you go quite far down the road. So what we're looking to do here is to update this house, uh, the, the outward appearance of it. So maybe it's a little bit more mid-century modern looking um, than it currently is. And then also do an addition on the right side right here um, where I'm pointing to. And on the site plan, you can see the driveway coming up the hill here. These are all the contour lines. And then the proposed addition is right here. It's not that large of an addition. It's a one story. And we're also uh, proposing to do a portico on the front of this house with some stairs that make sense to get you down the grade and also help the appearance of the building. And in this photo, you can see the current state of the stairway and the entrance is, you know, it's a non-event, this entrance. And the stairway is just sort of a ramshackle thing that we really want to dress up a little bit. Um, here you can see the addition on the right side. There's that chimney. And then you can see the steps that we're creating. These are landscape masonry steps that get you up to a terrace sort of midway up the uh, hill and then you have some wood frame stairs that get you up to the portico and the new front door uh, the, the existing front door is way over here in the living room we've created this nice foyer element off the porch this 3d drawing shows you those elements this is the addition right here so we're just mimicking the existing roof line with this addition and setting it down a bit um, to keep a, a break in the roof line Chimneys there. You're not changing those front windows. We are changing the front window. Oh, okay. I'll get into that in a moment. Um, and then this is the portico. 
addition that we're proposing with a porch and some picket rails um, and a wooden stairway to get you down to a masonry terrace right here. And then the stairs, the uh, landscape stairs, you can't see they're behind this little cheek wall right here. These windows are new, actually. This is a, these are, they're a little bit bigger and they've got muttons in them, two over two muttons. Still maintain that picture window with the flankers. And the same thing down at this end here. Oh, and I see. Yeah. And then this is a master bedroom addition here. So these have a little more understated windows, uh, double hungs, the two over two double hungs. And then there's another 3D view. Uh, we're also replacing the siding. Um, there's aluminum siding on this house right now. And we are proposing a composite siding, party plank, six inch exposure, clapboard siding. So the, the wider exposure is a little bit more mid-century modern kind of a look than say a four inch clapboard. Um, Gives you a little more uh, modern feel to it. Are We've you... got a stone base under this portico to bring it down to the ground and uh, some lattice panels in there to fill in the, the void. Um, these are going to be Marvin Elevate windows with simulated divided lights as depicted here in this photo. We are going to do a stone veneer on the portico base, it looks like this right here, the center color, kind of a gray um, and coloration, uh, kind of a regular, I'm gonna call it a regular random pattern. It's not a crazy random pattern, but it's, it's irregular. And right now there's concrete block on the base of the building, so we'll just paint that out um, I don't think we really want to spend the money to put the stone on it at this point. Uh, we've got a side view. This is from the left side. Uh, this is These are existing structures here, so they'll be resided with new windows. And then you're seeing a side view from the driveway, the portico addition here. This is the right side, so you're seeing the addition right here. There's no windows in that. You don't really see this facade from anywhere along the public way. And then the chimney will remain, the brick chimney, and then the side view of the portico again. The rear of the house, which you don't see from anywhere, but those will be new windows inside on that. The uh, railing system will be a composite, the Intex uh, product, which is a dull vinyl looking product with the traditional spindle uh, uh, balusters and where uh, new will post. Um, the roof line, the uh, roof shingles will be again an architectural asphalt shingle. Um, we'll probably end up replacing what's there, but it'll be very similar to what's there now. And there'll be AZAC corner boards painted. And I think that's more or less it. Happy to take your questions. Is the garage door staying the same? Um, at this point, yes. I have not specified anything to change the garage door. Not kind of an interesting mid-century modern look to it. Garage door. What's that, Bonnie? Unusual. I I've never seen one like it. It's the best part of this house, I think. Is the garage door. <laughs> so we're going to keep that for now. Okay. Yeah, and you can see our windows are. Our flanker windows are larger. I think our windows are a little taller. So got a little better look to it, I think. Much better. Looks looks good. I'm curious why you don't have a window on the uh, outside of the new addition, master bedroom. Well, they've got windows in the rear. See, this is the new bedroom. Yeah, they got we'll put the bed here. somewhere. <laughs> So they get good cross ventilation with this window arrangement. And really, there's no need for them on the side. It's the north, too. So um, no sense spending money when we don't have. 
any other questions or comments from the commission? No. All right. Thank you, Peter. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Would anyone in the audience like to speak for this application? Would anyone in the audience like to speak against this application? HDC 22-47 is closed. HDC 22-48, uh, 21 West Main Street. Gary, I think this one was you again. Yes, uh, Peter Springsteel here, uh, architect, 105 Star Street, Mystic. Um, here tonight for the Mariner restaurant. Um, this is a photo I took just this afternoon of what, <laughs> I'm just kidding. This is from the, probably the 1920s of the 1930s. Um, and this is the Mariner building right here. And of course you all recognize this building right here, still there today and looks very much like that. So I just wanted to show you this as a point of reference. Trying to get us there. So in this photo here, you see the Mariner of today. Looks a little different. I'm, I don't know if the top burned off or it was taken off or what, but it, missing that second story and the, and the uh, pedimented roof. Very similar to Bendette's old building. I think this is Bendette or Black Dog is this building here. So it was very similar, that building there. So um, what we're proposing here is again, second floor dining. Uh, right now there is no dining on the outside of this building uh, up above the roof. Uh, but the plan here is to now do that. And um, this elevation here is the elevation along West Main Street that we're proposing. And what I'm trying to do here is bring back that uh, Greek revival or, or an echo of that Greek revival uh, structure that was there. Um, so this is a full roof that will continue on back. Um, about halfway down the length of the building. The building's very long. And um, this would be a solid wall here and a solid wall here with uh, built up pilasters, Greek pilasters that would mimic the ones that are there right now down the lower level. But then I'm proposing to leave this area open in the center here. And then this uh, pedimented area would be open as well. There'd be a cross member here to tie the roof together, and those would repeat as you go back into the building. So in 3D, you would you would see this opening here. But then your overall impression here would be of another Greek revival structure that's been modified a little bit, um, which is very similar to this one and many others on this main street. Um, rather than this sort of truncated facade that we have right now. It's funny, you, you get used to these things and you don't notice them, but after uh, you do some research, you find out things were quite a bit different. Um, in the back, there's that alleyway that goes down between this building and the brick building next door. Um, and then you have the Mystic Art Center parking lot and Steamboat Wharf parking lot here. So in the back, why these are so faint, but there is a new stairway to get you up to the second floor, an outdoor stairway. This little covered area exists today when you that gets you out of the back of the restaurant. And then we're proposing another structure here, one to continue that mass down the to the back of the building, but also as a functional thing to, for us to store furniture in the season and dry goods and things of that nature that we'll need to use for the restaurant service. Um, so this is a view that you will see um, from- Is that about a roof or is it just a, a wall? It has a roof. It's a, a low pitched flat roof here. 
But if you recall, if you go into the back, and I should have done a picture back here, if you look at the back of uh, all the buildings on West Main Street that face the parking lot, they're very utilitarian. Obviously, they're functional spaces that have been added on over the years to um, for restaurants and stores and things of that nature. So this is, I guess, kind of in keeping of that same vocabulary of stuff going on back there. Uh, but clearly not the primary view of the building. Um, this view here is one that you probably don't see really. You might see some of this actually from the parking area, looking back in this direction. But we're gonna have a, a fenced area here. To, there's a lot of mechanical equipment that sits up here right now that's gonna remain there. We're just screening that off from people as they walk up to the restaurant area. Uh, and it probably looked better than what's there today. So um, go ahead, Bonnie. So you're gonna walk up an uncovered step and you'll right. not uncovered to get to that. Okay. Right. And the building code will allow that in certain circumstances if you, you have to provide a maintenance program and you have to design the stairs so that the water drips through them and you are allowed to not have a stairway, I think stairway roof. I think in this case, the stairway roof might add a lot of, a lot more, I don't know, not good looking stuff to the back. So our, our preference is not to have a roof. Okay. Um, and then this is the uh, extended gable roof that goes about halfway back from the other direction. But you have buildings right up against this area here. So I'm not sure you see a hole. This is again a dead on view of the alleyway facade. So again, we have some screen uh, fenced screening here. So uh, there's some privacy up there for people who are eating there because the big brick building looks right at that. Uh, there's a lot of windows. Looking this is the uh, storage uh, structure that I mentioned before here, and then the new stairway. Um, these are just existing floor plans. These are elevations of the existing building to give you a sense of the comparison. As far as materials go, um, the stairway railing will be this composite uh, Intex, all vinyl, again, in white. There will be uh, Intex fencing here as well. New Intex solid board composite fencing system. So I'm looking to do these in a darker color, more like this tread color here so that they don't pop out at you too much. Um, then this is gonna be a uh, stained cedar shingle uh, wall here on the uh, storage building, It'll be a painted PVC fascia board on that running around. This is existing painted concrete block and existing painted wood uh, Cornice here running along the building that will remain. And again, here we have that screen screening. Um, on the uh, alleyway side, it's going to be five foot six tall. On the other side that faces the rooftops, it's going to be six feet tall. And then all of the um, front facade work will be painted. Azac with all this intricate detailing um, as shown with crown moldings. And then in the railing on the front, we want to use the uh, stainless steel cable railing with uh, painted PVC post and um, a mahogany cap on top of that. What's that beam going to be made out of, the cross beam? So those beams will be steel, but they'll be clad with uh, AZAC, painted okay. AZAC. And again, the ceiling 
inside this roof line, which you will see again from the street level, will be the painted PVC beadboard brought same, same as SIFT. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, and that's, that's the kind of a ceiling you'd see on a porch roof, older building. How many exits are there from, from here? The second well, floor? In this one, there is one exit. We uh, have purposely kept the occupant load to less than 50 in order to be allowed to do that. Can you show the, um, Peter, because it's not in the application, that the original old historic picture of the building again, please? Sure. She might be hungry. I think it was a sister to the building next door or two doors down, very similar. Thank you. Where's the door gonna to be to the restaurant, you know, for the service to bring the food out? They will go out the back door. Um, and up the stair. So in this view here, this is the existing back door right here. It's covered, there's a covered area right here when you come out the back door and then the stair going up is right there. So they will be sprinting up and down stairs. So there's no entrance or doorway between the second floor and the first floor? No, there's no interior stairway connecting the two spaces. This will be a seasonal use, of course. And I, I don't know if Jacob's on the line, but I, I assume they'll probably use some sort of drop, drop plastic in the inclement weather. Comments or questions? Bonnie, no. Uh, Eric, no one has anything else? All right. Does, Peter, do you have anything else that you may want to add? That's all I have. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, would anyone in the audience like to speak for this application? Would anyone in the audience like to speak against this application? HDC 22-48 is closed. I'm going to go back to HDC 22-45. This was 3 Pearl Street. Are you on the call? No. I'll make a All motion right. to continue it. I'll second. All in favor? Uh, Goodrich? Aye. Levinson? Aye. Moriarty? Aye. Goodman? Aye. Galt? Aye. Thank you. The application is continued. All right. Uh, I'm going to close public hearings and now I'm going to open um, deliberations. Uh, HDC 22-40 was continued. Um, HDC 22-43. Thank you. So this was the application of extending the overhang with AZAC and um, adding it from nine inches to 18 inches. Any comments or um, motions? I'll make a motion to approve it. I'll so second. Subject to if they're, they'll come back if um, they can't do what they propose. Any comments? All right, all in favor? Goodrich? Aye. Robinson? Aye. Moriarty? Aye. Goodman? Aye. No. Aye. The application is approved. So you just did a little bit of submitting an 18 inches, and they just have to come back if they do anything other than that. Um, 22-44 was continued. 
22-45 was continued, 22-46. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve it. All right, HDC 22-46 was Five Water Street, SIFT Real Estate. Bonnie's made a motion to approve. This was the addition of the uh, rooftop dining. Second. Any comments? All in favor? Uh, Rich? Aye. Levinson? Aye. Moriarty? Aye. Goodman? Abstain. And Nault? Aye. The application is approved. <laughs> HDC 22-47, this was that house on the hill, a renovations by Peter Springsteel, uh, windows, moving the door, addition, um, comments or motions? I'll make a motion to approve it. All right, second. Any comments? I think it's a good improvement. I would be way really better. <laughs> I would agree. Um, all in favor, uh, Goodrich? Aye. Levinson? Aye. Moriarty? Aye. Goodman? Aye. Nault? Aye. The application is approved. Goodrich is kind of confusing for me to ask him. Um, HDC 22 48. I'll make a motion to approve it. Yet. Um, 21 West Main Street. This was the rooftop addition to the ancient mariner for the exterior dining. Um, Bonnie has made a motion to approve. Any comments or motions? Yeah, I am completely against it. I think it doesn't fit. You need a second. Yeah, we'll need a second. Oh, sorry. A second. For what? But the motion. So the motion to approve. So you need to have uh, a second. Okay. Sure. Yes. Um, comments. Yeah, I, I think it's a horrible design. I don't think it fits. I think it would look great if we were in Reno or Vegas. Um, I know Peter, who I'm a big fan of most of his designs, is trying to hark to what was there. In my opinion, it's a complete mess. Looks like nothing in downtown. And I mean, downtown is our resource. People come here for downtown. And I just, I don't think it's a good, a good design at all. Okay. I tend to agree. I I like Peter's work. Um, I just am worried about this and the look changing. You know that view from the bridge, especially. Um, it just seems tall, and it's tough because I don't know that there's any. There's no heights on anything. So I mean, using this for scale, you're you're talking about adding. 20 to 25 feet from building. I mean, it's going to sit somewhere up between the third and four story windows of the apartments and tower over that island pursuit. Well, it used to be like that, so I don't think it's inappropriate at all. Well, it didn't look like this. Well, it had the same roof line. This looks like it should be in front of Caesars in Vegas, frankly. Yeah, it's, it's wide open. I mean, it's going to be huge. And to Eric's point, I mean, that's a highly photographed area right in front of the bridge. I don't see anybody want to take pictures in front of it, that's for sure. I said, we got to be sensitive to downtown. That's what brings tourism into this town, what supplies our, our business people. So I. I'm actually a giant fan of the design. But that being said, when we're now in deliberations, was this feedback ever given to the applicant? Like that was. You didn't do a pre -up. Were you? I wasn't here. Were you? Like, we don't think I wasn't here for a pre app on it either. No pre app? I didn't okay. see it for them. Um, but when, like, just a little, like, when we. Talk to comments for the applicant, like that would have been the appropriate time to give feedback to the design, not necessarily now. Like, you know, if there was and if there were things you didn't like about it, that's what we have the public hearing for is to Tell give me. those comments. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that could be said both ways. I mean, you didn't support it either, Bonnie. 
So the fact that we were silent about it, I think it just took a minute to, to settle in. So, you know, kind of based on that, I think it's a little unfair to the applicant that we didn't provide any feedback and then we get to the public deliberations and we vote it down um, well, can we without providing with feedback. I, that's what my preference would be so like long see, as it's okay with the applicant. I'd like to see heights. I'd like to see where it's back to the other building. Um, the views from the bridge. Views from the bridge. Right. These are, I mean, hindsight's 2020, but these are all things that we should have I'll, I'll speak up earlier next time. <laughs> in the, the public hearing. Um, you know, you've already closed the thing. Right, I know. But Peter can hear us, right? Um, and, we, and we can continue. Well, I'll make a motion to continue it. We Second. Close the building. Right. But we don't have to vote to approve or disapprove. The public hearing is over. Right, but we no, can still right. continue the application. I don't receive any new information. Next meeting, we can. Public hearing is closed. But if we continue it, then. You should have continued it before you close it. Okay, so you have to re everything. Can we, so in the past, we've been able to reopen the public hearing and then continue. Okay. You just let us do it before. No, we've, never, we've never done that. We've reopened it. We've reopened it. But we've never reopened it. But we've reopened it to receive additional information. In this instance, you want to address it again, it would have to be it. because you closed it. And so if anybody was here and you closed it, and they leave. Expecting uh, because we closed it already. I see. We didn't continue it during so the, hmm. I'm so looking for, I'm looking for guidance. So we hmm. have closed in the past. Tell me if this is if we can't do this, but we've done it in the past. We've reopened public hearings. People have shown up, we've closed it, we want to hear their application. We've reopened them. So can, people have shown up meaning the applicant. Yeah. I thought yeah. we just so, did it on uh, Pearl Street driveway. That was, Last, that we, was we, continued. We, we, I don't think we continued it till we got, I don't know. I don't remember. Yeah, we closed it last time. time. You're right. Right. But I'm just saying in the past meetings that we've had, we have closed the public hearings. Other things have happened. People have shown up. We have reopened public hearings. Not advertising? It's all in the same meeting. No, but uh, you're, if it's in the same meeting, that's, that's that could saying. be different. But in this meeting, so I'm proposing that we reopen public hearings and we vote to continue this application to allow the applicant to come back again. Is that maybe we're miscommunicating? Uh, yeah, I think you were just. I, I assume you just weren't. If you reopen it, right? So next I, time you should just, if you have information. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> right. But um, I also, I also just think like the fact that we didn't. Give them feedback. I mean, I've been doing enough zoning hearings where they've said nothing and it was denied. So, yeah, but that doesn't necessarily make it right. It just makes it a bad zoning board. Um, we always try to give, or that's what our what we're supposed to do. That's what that's why what comments are supposed to be called for. Yeah, I, I, trust me, I'm in a weird position with this one, but that's why I think he should have come for a pre app. All right. Well, he did a lot of things. Pardon. He didn't. So, right. so I mean, my do some yeah, position there's a, there's a body. There's a procedure that we've followed in this board since I've been on it. People should come for pre-apps if they want I feedback. I don't disagree with you, but he didn't do it. So he did. He didn't do that. My position would be to reopen public hearings and to move to continue this to allow the applicant to provide additional feedback or hear the feedback and provide additional information. That's where my position is. Can I, just, can I clarify you. something, please? I, I yes. thought there was a motion made by Nalt and seconded by Goodman to approve the, the application. And then a roll call was not done yet. So there's a motion on the floor. Right. Right. So I think that they would withdraw that motion and then we would make a motion to continue to to reopen the public hearing. Okay. I'm I'm good with that. I just there's a motion on the floor. <laughs> I don't know what to right. do with it. <laughs> we can also amend the motion. We can amend the motion as well. So I'll I don't need to do that. 
Yeah, I'll make a motion to amend the previous motion to grant the certificate of approval. To reopen the public hearing. And to reopen the public, the public hearing. Dr. Okay. What is, the, what is the amendment? The, the amendment is to withdraw the certificate of approval or the motion of approval and to reopen the public hearing. I thought it was to amend. I'm sorry, it was. It was to amend. I'll, let's not amend it. I'll withdraw the motion. If okay. Eric will withdraw right. his second. That makes it cleaner. She's just withdrawing it. I'll suck it up. Okay. All in favor of withdrawing Bonnie's motion? Uh, Aye. 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 Not. Aye. Now, we we'll make a motion to reopen the hearing to take additional evidence and to give additional feedback to the applicant. Second. We're not, we're not reopening to do anything. We have to continue. Exactly. Um, I mean, so I would send her motion after motion good. Okay. okay. Uh, now, the, the public hearings up, you're free to ask him exactly what you want. But I think to. Well, well, the motion is so you can discuss the motion or you can vote on the motion and then that would be open. Okay. I think it's better since we have some differing opinions to so just give it two weeks to get our thoughts. Right. I'm, I'm with I, Eric I on agree. that one. Okay. Uh, Goodrich. Aye. Levinson. Aye. Moriarty. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Not. Not. You're muted. Yeah. Aye. Okay, I am going to reopen the public hearing and call HDC 22-48. And the purpose that I'm reopening this is because I make a motion to continue this application to the next hearing. Okay. Him. Levinson <laughs> seconded. Okay. Uh, Goodrich. Aye. Levinson. Aye. Moriarty, aye. Goodman. Aye. Nault. Aye. The application is continued. Okay. Okay. What? Sorry. Okay. Sure. She's just going to go get that. Uh, she's going to go get that. Greetings. <laughs> you already know that's awesome. <laughs> Thanks again. Appreciate your time. <laughs> yes, permission. Okay. Uh, are there a lot of pre applications? There are four. Are we taking a break or what? I didn't hear that. We are taking a minor break. I'm sorry, Bonnie. Yes. Okay. Okay. I have tried. I will continue to try. Yeah. Um, all right. So eight I had eight ice house lane. Come on up. My name is Peter. Hi. My sister Lana. Hi, I'm Lana. She owns Ice House Lane. Can you give your last name? 
My name is Peter Bartonkowski. This is Lana Sidorelli. He owns this house land <clears throat> the past couple months. They want to put a house up. This is the house. Nobody wants to see it. We'll pass it down. We've we'll heard stories that this is a historic zone. Well, where my lot, lot is located. Her lot was on the ice house. The ice house was on the lot. A couple of houses down. That's not a story. Mm -hmm. We like that house. Which lot is so? Right? Yeah, it's, it's on the corner. So it is. So that so was one parcel, and it mm -hmm. got subdivided. Yeah. So some houses in that. Right. Aren't in that's why we're here. I'm I'm lot seven. Supposedly we're in the historic district. You're on the you're on the we're on main street road. and on the corner. Yeah. So, so we're on your London house. Road so you and on the corner of the house lane. I have the uh I have the house. The house across the street is historic. The house next to that one's historic. And then oh, across the street are historic. Ones in the back, there's three. They're not historic. One of them moved five feet to the store. You know the whole system. Yeah. <laughs> We've been doing some research. And I think that's what we do. So we like this house here. We don't want to cause any problems with the neighborhood. We want to fit. Um, so we came here before we buy this plan to build this house. We want to know if you guys are okay. Do you have a GIS map? Because I know where the house is, but I don't know if everyone or the lot is. I don't know if anyone everyone else knows where the lot is. I did I I think I figured it out. It's when you make the right before right, right. Yeah, right, right on the right. Right. I just didn't know where it was. Right on the back door. Okay. okay. It's not wood, it's scrubs. It's scrubs. It's not wood. Graveyards. On the side. Is it brick? That's just a picture of what we like. Okay. We want to do cedar shake side and natural. Like classic black black shutters, white trim. We want window things just like across the street. No brick, no nothing. Black front door, black garage doors. No natural white trim. Just simple patio. Keep it consistent. Well, colors, you can do whatever you want. Patio, anything in the back, in case you go public way, you can do whatever you like. Uh, just you, really. You just can see what you see clear of the lot. Yeah, yeah, so you can we see didn't it. put anything yet. We're not even going there. Um, we can plan on putting up some kind of stone wall eventually, but we're not really talking about the backyard. I mean, we well, did back, anything we could see first. I believe that back of that house will be uh, right on the street. Yeah, viewed from a public way. So right will, on the street. Oh, it will help need approval. Because both I'm sides, sorry, what did you say? The all uh, like three the sides, almost all sides of that house will be viewed from a public way, I believe. Yeah, front, yeah. Correct. Correct. Right. Um I envision doing, you know, putting out the berms to, you know, block the road, landscape it nicely. Just come up a couple of feet around the back side of the house, which is in front of the road. Oh, the house is going to face. Yeah, the, the, the house, house is going to face, face in the yellow houses. Inside the development. Inside the development, the cul-de-sac. So the side will be the profile of the road. Yep, somewhere. Yeah. Barely, yeah, as you go, because it's going to be on an angle. So you're basically going to see the back of the house when you come into Mystic from Groton. You'll see the back of the house. What would help it, it would come for the hearing is to have the site plan show exactly where the house is going to be oriented. oriented. Yeah, that's not a problem. I mean, but obviously the back of the house is going to face the road. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So my other question is, is it? Viewable from a public way in the historic district or any public way anywhere? So, the, the, the I, house, I think it's any public way anywhere. No matter what. Okay, so, so then, it would be, then you'd have to see all sides of it. Okay. So, here's my question 
this house, you guys know what those houses look like up there. Is that house consistent with what's up there now? That house consistent with historic houses. Well, you don't have to be consistent with historic houses. I mean, it's a brand new house. That's the question we wanted to answer. Right. I mean, materials would we be super supportive by siding? We're not no. Them out. But I mean, you're, you don't need to make your new house look old. Okay. So we learned something. You know, it's, mm. it's a new house. Um, I think the design from what I've seen from that just one front, it's a nice design. We we like that house. I don't object to your design at okay. all. I think it's fine. I think to me, if you came back, the materials would be more important. And you already said you were looking to yeah, We have no problem just... putting up what materials are going to be on the house. I'm actually going to build the house myself. So we have no problem making a list of everything that we'd like to do. We just that picture. I'm sorry. Right where the pen is. It's so long. Sorry, I forgot about that. Uh, I mean, I think we'd like to, when you get ready, see every okay. elevation, every side, where it's going to sit on the lot. But yeah. when you buy the plan, you'll get it. Yeah, we're going to have all that. But so do you think it's, you think I should, it's okay to go out and purchase this plan then? Because they are like four. Yeah, we don't want to spend $2,000 for no 2000. reason. That's why we came here tonight. I think it's a charming looking house. Yeah. I would personally have no problem with it from what I see right there. Okay. I'd like, I, I don't have any problems with it either, but really the back side of this house is what's going to be important because that's coming in on Main's entrance to this. Speaking of the back house. Back so if house. you have a back view of it, that would be helpful. This is another question that I had. The back of the house is, is going to have to face the street. There's no way this house can face the street. It's no easy. It's just motorcycles. That, that's fine. The back. That's fine. It would be just a lot. to look at that's what, what I wanted to ask. Like. We just have to look at those. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I just didn't know if it had to. What you're saying is we need to see what. Yeah, no, that's fine. And, and we'll bring that when we get these plans. We'll have all of that. Um, okay. Now, my question offhand is anybody know how to this wise? Does this compare what's there now? This is just a little smaller than the house across the street. This is about 2,000 square feet. Across the street's 2,400. So it's not going to be anything, you know, small and then big. It's right. Yeah. Is there an issue on where the driveway has to, uh, not the, the garage has to sit? Can the garage face the the entrance to the development? Like as you pull in, you make that right if you were coming from downtown. You pull in and then the driveway is actually here. In some areas, there's restrictions where the garage can't face it. And yeah. in this case, they wouldn't be. Right. Not the main street. This would face the cold side. Right. So we don't know if we should flip this plan or not. Is that okay that the garage faces the, well, the restrictions that and whether and those garage. restrictions aren't handled by us okay well the reason why we're asking is because alfie across the street he had to move his garage to the other side of the house because when people were driving by the front of the road they would see his garage so he had to move it to the other side of the house and back it up a little bit so you couldn't see his doors what was that, 12 years ago but this is what we've Did learned you? So we're asking the question. Okay. Because okay. cool. on this plan, they. We just want to know. I've heard it a few times. That's all. That's why I'm asking because on this plan, the the garage, uh, you know. The only, the only other restriction that we would have is, is if the driveway were too close to a corner, and then the public works would have made them. Because well, if it was, you know, a road and then a driveway. Right, exactly. Yeah. Or something like that. There's, so a, it was, there's, there's, a, a, there's a driveway apron already from the street. It's about 50 feet in. That was done by the town. Yeah, that's appropriate. We so want to use that driveway. You can swoop your driveway 10 circles if you want. Okay. That's your problem. That's, then that, that question's answered. Now, going back to something you brought up about a patio in the back in the future, what, what has to be done to do something like that? I don't know. Well, the patio is going to face the public street. It's going to face the road. So, 
You'll have to bring materials. And the design, and, yeah. you know, yeah. you can't tell you how to design it. So, but you, know, you also can't really take vegetation into account, but if you did have a decent landscaping plan, it might. So my question is, I mean, she wants a patio, like every other house in the world. Is she allowed to have a patio? She has to apply for a yeah. certificate of appropriate, appropriateness for a patio. Okay. So but... you guys have to approve the patio. Right. So okay. we need a plan for the patio. Yeah, draw some. That's why I'm asking. I'm not asking it to be okay. Okay. So I draw something up. You're going to have a plan for the back of the house. In well, the historic district, you can't do anything without approval, right. except in color and match like for like everything. Everything has to get approved. Heights of um, walls and such that if it's below a certain height, that's not in our purview. Uh -huh. So we bring in pictures of everything and we show you and then we either decide to put the patio on now we put the patio on later mm -hmm. we can deal with that yeah as long as everybody can work okay. then shouldn't be an issue that sounds good so we're going to purchase this plan. we're going to put in an application we're going to come back and see you when third week of this month yep. well, we suggest that you, have no meeting September. September you have no second meeting at all When's the next meeting? September 6th. Seven o'clock? Right. Why don't we have another meeting? I don't know. And it would be better to come back and do another pre hearing. Yeah. Yeah. Next time you come back, it's between a pre hearing and a hearing. Pre hearing is a lot less formal. And then we can have a back and forth. And any, make any suggestions and issues rather than trying to adjust everything at the uh, hearing itself. So we come to the meeting on September 6th and then we come back another three weeks later for an approval? Two, two, two weeks. Right, there's a public hearing like the ones that were before. We have to advertise those in the newspaper. So there okay. has so to be a meeting. Somebody has a problem, they come down and say we have just a public notify that there is a public. Hearing happens. And so sure, there's a lead time where you have to submit to us. We have to give. It. Realistically speaking, if we get everything together on the sixth and then come back two weeks later, we may or may not get an approval. What's the percentage that we get an approval on the second time coming back in? You went to a prelim on the sixth. You mm -hmm. should get all of the feedback that you need to have an appropriate and complete application. And you should know if anybody has concerns. So if you had listened to the feedback on the sixth, then you should be fine. Okay. On the following meeting. Okay. If you come to the meeting and everyone is against everything you want to do, and you come back two weeks later with the okay. same plan, same yeah. plan, well, that would be <laughs> it's not going to get approved. Right. <laughs> if you come back with changes, you're yeah. okay with it. Okay. That generally means that we're just trying to get a timeline here. Sure. That's all. So we can do our plan. Mm. She's not from town. So okay. Well, thank you for your time. Thank, thank you. you. Um, 54 Pearl Street. Craig Bush? No? He he was the one that came in. He already Very presented. Oh, for the dry wife, gotcha. Um, I'm not going to try to say your name. Miss Akiza. Come on up. Close there. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Stefan Shopolis. I'm uh, the architect representing Mystic Pizza. Um, we were before you this commission in January. We got approval for the deck up of the wall structure. But since then, going through the process of uh, review, the zoning and zoning, and staff, the fire marshal, we have to reduce the size by approximately square feet because of the occupancy load. Um, and we did that by just relocating, if you recall, it was a screen wall, we relocated by four feet. The change is minor, you hardly can tell the difference, but we still feel that we have to come before you and show you what we did so you're aware of it. You've already done it or you're- No, 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 but we're in the process of going through planning and zoning. If you could set, look at the screen, if you could set it right by the, oh. Oh, by the way. Let me so just put the existing, the, which was approved and what we're proposing.
can you raise it up just a little bit? No, he's he working on it. There we go. That's better. Perfect. Okay. The one on the top is the one that you moved in January. Uh, the one on the bottom is the one that we're ending up with after we're reducing the square footage by 90 square feet approximately uh, to accommodate uh, prime motion's comments for the occupancy. Um, so basically, moving this wall over this way, approximately four feet, so it's ending up here. So it's really not changing much of anything. I'm still going to have to show you what we did. So this might be a good example of going under old business and doing administrative review. I don't know what anyone else's thoughts on this are. Yeah, yeah I think it's fine. Well, the materials are the same. Not changes, just the are, we, are we done with uh, pre-applications pre and this is now we moved on to old business? No, no, no. I was just saying that this is a is one one of the things that we've been talking about. That this change is a good example of where we would move this under old business and do at our next meeting. This would come on as old business, and it would be an administrative review rather than notice public hearing vote because this is really just shrinking. An approved an already approved application. I agree. Put her under old business today. Under uh, hearing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So confused. I'm coming next week and not next week. This meeting. Uh, yeah, we were, that we're trying to avoid that. Right. So we're going to move you to old business tonight. And we administratively approve your change tonight so you don't have to come so back. back in my chair. You can go back. <laughs> you don't have to come the next week. We right. vote on it the next week. But if you can leave those with us. I did make copies for everybody. So this is one. Except for Bunny. Yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, we're going to do this one. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. It's just that we're trying to get it done so we can do the construction in the winter time and, and farm ourselves for a loop on us. Uh, we're trying to get 25 seats up there maximum. Uh, we're not even looking for occupancy 50 or more. But the way it's being reviewed, the, the code allows you two different ways to look at it. If you have one open space, basically, uh, they require seven square feet per person. They're saying people standing shoulder to shoulder, basically. So that's not what we're proposing, proposing tables and chairs. And for that, code allows you 15 square feet per person. The argument the fire marshal is saying, well, you can always take this, the tables and chairs off and you can fill it up with people up there. I mean, I, I mean, in theory, he's correct. In reality, that's not what we're proposing. I mean, it's a pizza place for people to go up there and sit down and eat. Um, and we can't get, we don't want to get 25 people because you won't be able to handle volume to service the restaurant afterwards. So it's just the idea that outdoor sitting is such a big thing nowadays. You want to be able to say to your, you know, customers, yeah, we do have outdoor sitting. Basically the only reason. All right. Thank you. So I guess so. Um, 29 Cliff Lane. No. Where's the bus? Okay. Um, well, then you're next. Um, because we're just surprised to keep the thing, um, we're 12 Ashley. Um, the purple one. You have to identify yourself. Jake Dunnigan. Ali Mitchell. Um, and we just wanted to ask a couple of questions. Um, last time we came to you guys, we got a new roof. Um, this is the back of the house. Well, that's not going to help anybody. No. That's I could zoom in house you said so it's, it, it's green in that picture because that's what i wanted to be green. A window something too uh, um I, we were gonna do a window up top and then yeah. the roofing guys um that's a screwed us yeah. screwed us <laughs> um <laughs> so we fixed it ourselves but um 
what we want to do is the deck that we have um, is terrifying. Um, those are four by fours, and that's five. Um, so, uh, and it's it's pretty ancient. What we want to do is we want to ex extend. You see where the step goes down. We want to go past the house about four feet so that when people come over, they can go right um, along the side of the house. Um, right. On. You can't see it right now, but there's it's land sort of built up. Yeah, so there, you can you can sort of see like the there's a little bit of a, a fence on the side there, a big concrete wall. Um, clearly, the historic board wasn't around when whoever did the landscaping did the landscaping. We're we're doing it the best we can. Um, but I can't replace like for like because if we try to do what's there now, it would never. I, I assume you can bring it up to code, but it would look totally different because they'd be six by sixes, um, and there'd be quite a few more of them. Which I understand. Um, the likelihood of, of being able to get that far um, is 10 feet or so. Um, and then guys are going to need, in terms of, um, like, will you need a professional plan or just have it drawn up the same that we would turn in to the um, department? So, um, let me just reiterate what I think you said. So, you want to extend the deck and change the entire support structure. Yeah. And things like what, what's going on there? Well, that's sort of what we're here for. If there's, if there's something that you guys prefer, we'll, we, I don't aesthetically. I I, so, I don't really care. The, so. the bottom line is that we know that this is an extended process, and we want to make sure we don't waste your time or ours as we're doing it. So the more information we can grab from you up front about what you want or need when it comes to decks, we did some like not a lot of guidance on the internet. So getting as much from you as we can about exactly railing, what you want us to look for or do for railings, things we should know about steps so that when we come back with we'll materials and yeah. plan, we do it as well as possible. Can I ask a question? I didn't hear what street this is on and wherever Ash it is, can you see the deck from a public way? Oh yes. You can see, you can see, <laughs> you can see our whole house from everywhere. Yeah, we're, it's a, uh, um, we didn't intend to be um, efficient, but that's what we are now. <laughs> Here's my comment. Um, the house two to the right of you that just got redone, yeah. so yeah. they extended their deck and it's a lot bigger now. Personally, I don't think it doesn't matter to me whether they extend it. My suggestion to you on two things would be reach out to someone like Peter, who kind of know what we're looking for as far as aesthetics and how to get kind of tricky, and also not from a historic point of view, but from a builder's point of view, that's going to be pretty complicated to build. And you just want to make sure you do it right, because if you don't, you have a high chance of like that collapsing. So yeah. you really want to set a plans that like isn't like you downloaded the deck guide and decided to like build your own yep. deck. Uh, but uh, that's not from HTC. That's just from like a liability point of view. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A structural engineer who just graduated from law school. So. Told her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, and um, I think you can do something really nice that fits in with the house better and make it bigger without a problem. Yeah, we, we don't, yeah, and we're not really looking for any more depth. We just want a bit longer so that it's easier to, to get to get people. We don't really have a lot of room, actually. It, can't really tell here, but the whole yard drops off yeah. a uh, couple of feet yeah, from there. You know, we prefer natural materials. Just yeah, so a composite rail would probably be your least favorite. It depends, it depends on what it is. Yeah. Um, okay, but like a vinyl white, that's not that's cool. not. the building on the standard building, the big yellow one that yeah. we're talking about. That's a PVC railing that okay. looks like wood. And so I think we've been pretty okay with that. Mm -hmm. There's like vinyl railings you get at Home Depot that are like, like, like and yeah. sure, sure, okay. Like a, and I'm an alternate these days. I'm like big wood guy, so <laughs> you know, if I'm sitting here, I'm gonna lean more that way. Yeah. I mean, the reality is today you could do a PT structure with an eBay deck and make the railing of cedar and have it be cheaper than doing a PC. So, and that looks really nice. Those materials are approved by us previously. Yeah. So gotcha. it's not so much the extension that anybody would have a problem with. It's more the materials that you're using to replace it. And not even adding more posts. You got to do that to make it safe. Like that's better than what you got. 
yeah right now it i mean it yeah. it moves if you move yeah. yeah it's 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 fun it's like a yeah it's scary um so let's say we went with 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 pt structure do you want us to put face on it that's a um a, a, a more like finished wood product like wrap the pt it would look better in it, well yeah i i would agree with you there but what, is that better for you guys as well? like the the posts going up you want those wraps personally yeah if you can just wrap them yeah personally i would yeah get rid of the pt look because it's just whatever wrap them in cedar azac and paint it um boral like the three major ones but you can use solid gold which is like a um Sounds it's treated. No, it's actually, it's, 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 I haven't heard that one. Yeah. It's treated, I guess I could wrap everything uh, in solid yeah. gold. Yeah, I don't know what kind of money you come from. Yeah, no, that's good. It's a uh, no, it's a treated pine product. Like, so it's actually wood, but it's got a, like a forty-year warranty on it. Okay. So, if you don't want to use plastic, but Azek also works. It does, but Azek's more expensive nowadays than some of the other stuff. Interesting. We've talked about extension. We've talked about the support structure. Um, we've talked about sort of color and basic materials. Um, Guidance on uh, railing look from the oh, street. Oh yeah, railing type. Yeah. The railing type. Um, obviously, there's rules about like toddler heads not sticking through. Got all that for health and safety. But um, any any guidance you can give about um, so the world we could live in for the railings. Yeah, it's it's kind of like a Victorian home that's like mixed with some other stuff. So. Yeah. The Victorian home with with seventies windows, and yeah. and they are terrible. Yeah. So personally, like I I don't, I don't know. you can go a lot of different ways. Right. Yeah. I think I, you can go cable. But like the case, it would look nice. I think. I, I was thinking. Oh, yeah. yeah. What I'm what I'm hearing from you guys a preference. is yeah. Um, and as long as it it sounds like you have a leaning towards, does it look cohesive with the home? Yeah. Yes. Okay. If That's you came primary, back, with like a goal. Cool Victorian railing system that we've never even seen, and you're going to do it out of wood. Maybe that's awesome. Okay, right? sort of up to you. Okay, invent new deck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anything what you want to do in context is. Oh, I, don't, I don't know how if you've been here the whole evening, but uh, coming in for pre-hearings is much okay. better than just showing up for a hearing. Yeah. Gotcha. So we're looking at October before we break ground. Pretty much. Yeah, I mean, talk to some architect and come back at Wait, the next that's, that's, and We're broke, yeah. so that's totally fine. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah we're, we're, we're not like, darn, we wanted to break ground tomorrow. Yeah. I mean, we do, but we can't. Um, yeah. uh, pre hearing, yes. Um, and, and feedback integration before the actual hearing. Um, is, is there any I don't know how to say this, like informal feedback mechanism. If we're like, oh, can we email somebody? If we're in like a really big stick between like, oh, no. two. Okay, cool. Great. Yeah, shake your hand. Totally yeah. fine. I think you guys have also been here enough that you've seen like, yeah, kind of what. This feels like such a big project. We just want to make sure we're doing yeah, it. The staff that reviews the applications beforehand and they can do feedback. Oh, okay. We can do that. Peter is the building official. So we can do that. Right. They're here all the time. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Gotcha. Thank you, thank you, so thank just you. So uh, meeting schedule. The next meeting, as you heard, is September 6th. If you wanted to break ground in October, if you came here for September 6th, that would be a prelim. Mm -hmm. And after that, that's pushing towards the end of September. Then you would need a building permit that's pushing into October. Okay. Yeah, okay. It's just expectation management. It's all yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Awesome. All right. We will let you guys vote on your old business. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience for pre apps? Um, public communications. Uh, approval of minutes from July 19, 2022. I have one issue with the minutes. Yes. So, um, hold up here. When I brought up the State Historic Preservation Office, it says in the minutes that. Commission noted that, or whatever the, that the, the commission noted that preservation is not necessarily the role of the HDC. I think Todd noted that, not the commission. I'm a commission member. I don't agree with that. So I don't think that's changed to reflect that. Please. Linda, did you catch that? I did. 
Um, it, it typically is our, um, it, within planning, we don't call out individual members. It's, it's really the commission, regardless of who's making the statement. Um, you know, I can talk to somebody within the office, but that's historically how we've done it. I just think it's that one in particular is kind of tricky because it gives a perception that the commission's agreeing that preservation isn't within our context. And, and, and I, I think it's misleading. Perhaps a solution to that would be to just say a commission member rather yeah. than, and that satisfies both goals. It doesn't reflect the entire commission. And then it denotes that one of the commission members said that. Is that acceptable? Right. Fair enough. Sure. Okay. Of course. Yeah. All right. So we'll um, wait to approve those minutes till Linda can get us that. Um, old business. You know, it, it's up to you. You can actually approve them with the amendment. Um, and they're, they're not on the table to be signed at this point. It's up to you how you want to handle that. Sounds good. Yeah, I'm good with approving with the amendment. Okay, so then I'll move to approve the amendments with the aforementioned amendment. Okay. I'll second All it. In favor. Too I think late, Bobby. Goodman, gotcha. Um, Goodrich. Aye. Levinson. Aye. Moriarty. Aye. 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 Uh, Goodman. Aye. Nault. Aye. The amended minutes are approved. Um, old business, we have the Mystic Pizza application. So this came before us in a pre-app. However, um, during the pre-app, we discussed moving this to old business and administratively, admit, administratively approving the amended application to the reduction of the patio of 90 square feet. Um, any comments or motions? I'll make a motion to approve it. I will second. Uh, all in favor? Uh, Goodrich. I'm going to have to say. Levinson. Aye. Moriarty. Aye. Goodman. Uh, aye. No. Aye. The administrative application is administratively approved. Sorry, doing some tongue twisters there. Um, new business. Thank you. Yes, I think we should probably sign this somewhere. Maybe stamp. Yeah, so this is existing. The reason I hesitated was because I voted no on it. I can vote to change something that I voted no on, right? Sure. Okay. Yeah, that's why I, I voted no on it as well. well. Uh, However, it's yeah, approved and I don't object that's, to the change. Maybe. I, would have, I wouldn't have thought just to be friendly, guys. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, no, that's so weird. Yeah, I can see where you would fit. No, that's fine. Oh, I'm just trying to stay the post. No, please. I have a question for staff. When I was okay. trying to find the um, HDC handbook, I found it online, but I didn't find it by going to the town site and looking under historic district commission, uh, under commissions. I think it should okay. be in a link there, if it, unless it's there and I just wasn't it's yeah, under like inspection so I agree with Bonnie. You actually have to Google Groton Town, Groton, Connecticut Town Historic District Commission Handbook to find it. You yeah, can't it's find in, it. It's in there, but yes, it is very, it's very, very secretive on the town website. It should be much more prevalent. We're expecting people to follow the rules. More under like where the zoning regulations are. Can you put a link? Have someone put a link on it. Um, we can make a an IT ticket. We can see. If yeah, I completely agree with Bonnie because, in, in all fairness to the residents, that they're going to look under Historic District Commission, and if it's not there, I think it goes. We leave it under Inspection Services and just give it a hyperlink. There's a there is a section where we have like all of our regulations. But it's actually not even in there. That's where it should go. Yeah, so that's probably a better place. So. I, you know, I'll have to I'll look tomorrow, but I'm pretty sure it is under the section where there are the regulations. The application um, is the application, yeah. I don't think the I, handbook I is. I looked for the handbook there and I did not see it. And it's not under regulations because no, I, I think it's buried under inspection services somewhere. No, I mean 
to find that you literally have to Google town of Groton, Connecticut. <laughs> yeah, you know, and, unfortunately, and with our website, Google doesn't work as well as we'd love it to. Actually, I found the handle by Google better than going to the town site. Is that right? Uh, interesting. Well, all right, we'll look into it for sure. Thank you. Good point, Bonnie, thank you. We were moving on. Did you have another question before we move to uh, No, no, this is Jared. It's non, it's non historic. Okay. Um, before we adjourn, I guess I just want to echo what you were saying, or maybe just have a quick discussion. And I know it's a democratic commission, but there was a ton of pushback over that stuff on Gravel Street. And again, I'm in a really tough position with the Mariner project. We were asked to build it. Peter's my architect. It's a weird scenario. But it's, I think, god awful. And I think it's going to, that would open up a lot of change to downtown and more people requesting to do things like that. I think Adams is on the back of the building. It's a lot better than it was. I'm not sure I would have even approved it in the beginning, Adams deck. Um, but now it's there, it's gonna be better. But you start opening up these like rooftop things and anyone's gonna buy any building and just fill it with that. It's more of a zoning thing, but I think look too wise, like I agree with John, it looks like it's at Caesars. I don't, so everyone has their own opinion. I don't think that this part of the meeting is like, we should be talking about that when they bring the application forward. Like we shouldn't be talking about it now. And this, and the reason that I wanted to, like, I, I feel like we did this not the last meeting, but another meeting right before the last one where no one said anything. And then we got to deliberations and then everyone was opposed and we blindsided the applicant. I mean, if we, if the commission doesn't approve the application, that's one thing, but to not give them any feedback, yes, they should be coming to the pre-apps, but lots of people do things that they're not supposed to. I um, think just to, to stop here. Yes. I don't have a thing. I know Peter doesn't really address this, but when there's conversations like this and the application is reviewed. Right. This is this We're is not really supposed to talk about. It. I'm not right. particularly talking about the application in general. I'm just talking about downtown. Okay, yeah. If you keep it to that, like in generalities, we yeah. don't mention that. that but I, I also think in regards to applications in general, um, I think if you're going to come to something without a pre-app for like a dorm or a fence, um, a screening thing, something, and you don't want to come to a pre-app, so be it. But if you're going to come for something large and then throw it in, I think. You know, I, I didn't really know what to say. I, like at the time, again, this isn't talking about their application, but personally, at the time when they did their thing, I'm sitting there kind of like, I don't really know what to say about this, but I think it's not awful. We do, and we can talking try. Talking specific now. Doing more preamps when they come in. This one came in. Monty, I got it. Thank you. Well, and I, I want to add something from the last meeting. So we talked just general mystic downtown. You know, and again, I would. A fan of the book that the State Historic Preservation Office brought up when they talked about the oral school that talks about economic development in historic municipalities. And if that is our kind of goal to make sure we maintain our first trade and our business in Mystic. I don't know that that's our goal. But, well, that's one of our sensitivities, which seems to be people bring it up. I think we should all read the book because, frankly, that downtown is our natural resource. Again, a natural resource, but we need to be very careful how we administer it. Again, not talking about any specific projects, but I think any projects that would damage that or be out of place, we just need to be very careful on because it's quick to put it up, it's hard to take it back down. I'd prefer not to just have this discussion right now. And I'd like to make a motion to adjourn the meeting. <laughs> Why? Because I don't think we're doing our job to the public. If we want to have a special discussion like this, we should do it with the attorney and have a meeting and call for talking about our procedures. 
not well, I disagree. Tax. We don't have it's to call an attorney. We're having a general discussion. We don't have to call an attorney. We don't need an attorney at $375 an hour to come in here and oversee our meeting and so, give us some vague answers. Here's it's a discussion. That's the, I mean, I. What? <laughs> Wait, stop. Here's my question. Not, not to. I'm just asking is there anything else anybody wants to add? Like, you've spoken your piece, no, I, you've made your comments. Is I, there anything anybody else wants to add? I think John's point's well taken. I just think that we have a habit of rushing sometimes things that are larger than others that can be rushed. And I think we need to just be conscious of it, you know, if we're going to do what our duty is to do. Well, you have. HTC is different from other time frames of other public hearings. So you have 65 days and it kind of starts when it's received here. So you have 65 days. If it's a public hearing and, and you want to continue and get more information, you have plenty of time to get it. No rush. I just so think that there's been a public backlash to like the way we've been doing it. And there's a lot of people that are starting. This, it always happens this way. There's a pendulum. It's, it's, it always does. And it turns into a ton of stuff, like my building that no one said a word about, and then suddenly it was there, and then afterwards it just went away. But now people are starting to be like, wait, slow it down. You know, the people that live here don't want what's going on as much. And I just think we need to be conscious of that um, and take the right and appropriate amount of time. That, that's all I'm trying to get at. I don't agree. And, and, and again, I agree with him. And if I can't just shut me up, but 17 Gravel Street was a complete debacle. debacle for us. We all looked, I don't think, that in the public eye, and I said, we need to be careful not to do that again. We all have our own opinions about that project. Okay. <laughs> so, for opinions on other people. No, but I think that if we had taken more time as, I mean, it took them a year to two to approve, I think that's the same, to approve, start to finish the, um, Central Hall project, and when they first, I'm talking 10, 15 years ago. No, that was insane. But I'm just saying, I think if we take a little more time to sit there and actually think about the ramifications of it and everything into it, you know, I look at a plan like some that's come forward and like, there's just not enough there. And again, if it's in the backyard somewhere or something you can barely see, or if it's, you know, the ice house, like it's not as critical, but you, you change downtown, I don't know. Everyone's been heard. What uh, do you think the town can do to encourage people to come more to pre hearings? Well, we can do that on our end whenever they submit. And if they if we talk to them when they call up, I can be more forceful and say, I highly recommend a pre application. If you're have a complicated application. Yeah, I think if they're ACs, dormers, you know, small stuff like. Yeah, that would be fine. But, but honestly, I don't know why that happened, but I, I did not see the Mariner happen. I mean, it was the, the only thing I was, the height wasn't listed as something. But um, there's a lot of materials on that. That's not what, yeah. right. But I, so, for whatever reason, they still were submitted. And, uh, I just think that's going to turn into a debacle in construction, which is currently what's going on with Zeta, yeah. which is not a weird one because I'm building it. But they're making all these changes and told them over and over again. They're, out of coming here. Okay. Um, I'm going to move to adjourn. Second. I'll second it. <laughs> Come on, be an honor to meet you. Yeah, you're too slow, Bonnie. Welcome. All right, thank you, everyone. Thank you. It was second. Um, <laughs> I. I. <laughs> we don't vote. John. Sure. Right. No. Yeah, motion to adjourn. Beautiful. 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 Beautiful.